Mr. Rail, uh, how much do you feel you fell behind by not having summer league? And also, uh, I heard you broke some kind of record for the basketball, highest basketball IQ. Could you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I think obviously, um, you know, as rookies, we came in a little, little bit of a disadvantage not having summer league, um, you know, getting those runs in, you know, getting used to the physicality. Um, but I think for me, you know, kind of going off that IQ thing, um, using my IQ um, has kind of allowed me to, um, you know, maneuver around the game and uh, learn quickly um, through that test. Uh, the record I broke it was kind of just an IQ test that was ad administered by um, several league front offices, and um, I guess the results were that I broke the record. So, oh, uh, since you and Dwight also went to Stanford together, uh, you know, at different times, obviously, uh, how much have you leaned on him as far as trying to find out your way into the NBA? Um, he's been a really good vet, um, you know, for all the rookies. Uh, um, I think it's something, you know, it's uh, great for me to be able to lean on someone that, you know, went to the same school as me. Um, you know, he's been great to me so far. And, um, you know, I feel, I feel like he's a person I can lean on, you know, moving forward. Okay, Callie, back on. All right, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, yep. So take me through what these last two or so weeks have been like. When did you get to Dallas? How did you find a place to live? What has it been like kind of acclimating to this NBA world that you all of a sudden got to inhabit? Um, yeah, so um, I got to Dallas um, a week from last Friday. Um, I had to, you know, kind of quarantine for a few days and get those um, negative COVID tests, you know, consecutive negative COVID tests. Um, then we were allowed to start, you know, uh, individual workouts for, um, you know, three or four days. And then we moved on to team practices. And so, um, you know, it's been a gradual increase in as far as workload. Um, I think, you know, we've all handled it well. Um, you know, I'm kind of excited to see, you know, what we can do moving forward. What was kind of the most, I don't want to say surprising or, or shocking, but what story that stands out when you think about the chaos and the busyness of, you know, moving to Dallas and, and getting ready for the NBA in these last two weeks? Um, you know, I think it's just, you know, how quick it is. Um, you know, I got here about a week and a half ago and, you know, we're already leaving for Milwaukee um, on Friday, you know, to play preseason games. So, um, you know, in a normal year, you know, it's not that fast. And so, um, you know, we got to adjust quickly and, and get ready quickly and um, be prepared as, you know, as fast as we can. Chuck Cooperstein, Mavs Radio. Hey, Terrell, how are you? Uh, first off, uh, exactly how much do you weigh right now <laughs> uh, as compared to when uh, they were, I guess, uh, all, all the numbers were coming out? Have you, have you put on weight since then? Um, I haven't put on um, any weight since the combine. So, you know, I'm still around 170, um, you know, kind of uh, fluctuates a little bit. So, you know, I'll be a little bit over 170, a little bit below, uh, depending on the day. So, you know, I'm around, I would say I'm around 170 right now. Do you feel as if even just in this limited exposure to uh, NBA practices, do you feel as if um, you'll be able to or need to put on more weight to deal with the, the, the physicality of the game? Or is it, uh, are you going to have to rely on that great IQ to sort of uh, make sure that you get yourself out of the way and get yourself in the right spots? Um, I think both. Um, you know, I'm not where I want to be as far as weight and strength right now. Um, so, you know, I'm working on that every day. I'm getting extra lifts in and, you know, putting the right things in my body. You know, I want to get stronger and I want to um, continue to, you know, mature my body. Um, but, you know, I also, I'm never going to be, you know, some stocky, you know, player. So I'm always going to have to use, you know, my IQ to be able to maneuver um, around the game and um, kind of work my way around that. Jessica Armstrong, Fox Sports Southwest. Hey there, uh, welcome to Dallas. Just want to go back through the draft process because um, obviously you're um, slated to go a lot higher. So kind of what was going through your mind as everything um, went on during draft night? Um, yeah, it was, it was a, a pretty long night. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to get picked at 31. Um, um, but I think for me, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, I didn't go higher. Um, you know, I feel like I came to a great situation for me. Um, you know, I got the right uh, situation, you know, coming to Dallas, and I feel very comfortable here. A lot of great vets, great coaching staff, great, great, great organization, you know, as a whole. And so, um, you know, I could have gone higher, you know, as I was projected to, but um, I'm grateful that, I, you know, I'm even in the NBA in the first place. So that's kind of what I feel about that. Okay, two more. Valencia. Go ahead, Valencia. Hey, nice to virtually meet you. Um, I'm Valencia with Real Talk Sports, and I wanted to talk with you about the RA Foundation. I've actually had Lynn Ramos. And, uh, on my show before and I know I've seen you represent the merch and um, just talk to me about what that relationship has been like and how it's helped you during this transition period of your basketball career. Yeah um, I really can't thank Glenn Robinson enough for what he did for me um, you know throughout the pre-draft process um, you know he was a great role model for me um, you know I want to support everything that he does through the RA Foundation I think it's you know amazing what he's doing 
Um, but throughout the pre-draft process, you know, I was working out with him. Um, he was giving me a lot of tips. You know, we'd hang out, you know, off the court. Um, you know, like, like I said, I can't thank him enough for, you know, what he's done uh, for me, you know, throughout this process. And, you know, he's one of the most genuine people I've ever met, so. Okay, uh, last question, Eddie Sefko. Eddie, go ahead. Hey, uh, and with the quick turnaround after the draft, was there any NBA orientation type things going on and, and, uh, and uh, you know, what have they done or what have the Mavs done to kind of bring you up to speed on, you know, just how to be an NBA player? Yeah, so, um, you know, we had some rookie transition, you know, Zoom meetings, you know, usually that's in person, um, I believe in New York. Um, but this year, you know, I had to do some online meetings over Zoom to kind of, you know, go over um, some rookie, rookie, rookie things that, you know, we didn't know, need to know about going into the league. Um, and as far as, you know, just being a Maverick, um, you know, I think the gradual process of going through individual workouts and, you know, kind of bringing us up to speed as fast as they can, you know, um, when going through live practices and things like that. Um, you know, I think as a rookie, you know, you have to have a great level of maturity, um, to, you know, to make it, you know, with this quick transition. So, um, you know, I think there's, you know, those aspects to it. All right. Thanks, Tyrell. Appreciate the time.